The title of this lesson is called The Holy Spirit. The name and function of the Holy Spirit is another topic that many people seem to disagree on. Let's see if we can clarify this through the proper understanding of the scriptures. The first thing that should be understood is the fact that the Holy Spirit is a feminine spirit. How do we know this? Let's read from the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. It reads, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. The invisible spirit realm of God can be understood if we look at the physical things he made here on earth. The physical world is a manifestation of things that happen in the spiritual world. This includes the Godhead. Some people might ask, what exactly is the Godhead? The Godhead is a term that represents the three ruling functions in the heavens. How do we know that there are three? The next precept comes from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 7. It reads, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Now this is where some people introduce the false doctrine of the Trinity by attempting to say that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all the same entity. But that is not true. The Hebrew word for one is akkad. In the Strong's Concordance, it's number H259. And it means properly united as one. Just like when a man marries his wife and the two become one flesh, that doesn't mean they are the same entity. It means that they act as one because they are unified. The same goes for the Godhead. They all act as one, but they are three separate entities. The very next verse explains this same concept. Continuing, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 8 reads, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. It's obvious that the spirit, water, and blood are all different things, but yet they all work together to produce life. This is what makes them one. In the beginning, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all worked together to create mankind in their image. Let's get this understanding going to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. It reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. We see that God said let us create man. Us is a plural word. That means there was more than one entity doing the creating. That us was the Father, the Word, which is Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Then it goes on to show the image of God is both male and female. So if the Father is a male entity, and so is Christ, then that would mean that by default, the Holy Spirit would have to be the feminine spirit. The feminine spirit is mentioned multiple times in the Old Testament by her attribute, 
especially in the book of Proverbs. Let's go there. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, it reads, Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding for, put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the past. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. In the book of Proverbs, there is a female spirit that is constantly referred to as wisdom. This spirit is the same Holy Spirit that was with the Father in the beginning. How do we know this? Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22 through 23. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. This spirit, referred to as wisdom, was with the Father in the beginning, before the creation of earth. And when, like we read earlier in 1 John chapter 5 and 8, there were only three that bear record in heaven. Now, not only is wisdom mentioned in the Old Testament, she is also mentioned in the Apocrypha. Let's go to our Apocrypha and read from the book of Ecclesiasticus, or Syrah, chapter 24, verses 1 through 5, and it reads, Wisdom shall praise herself, and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwelt in high places, and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. I alone compassed the circuit of heaven and walked in the bottom of the deep. The Holy Spirit is called wisdom. And she was the one that was over the waters of the deep that's mentioned in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Just how God created Adam first and then pulled Eve out of him, the same thing happened in the heavens prior to that. The Father existed first. Then he pulled the feminine Holy Spirit out of himself. Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 17. It reads, And thy counsel, who hath known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. The Holy Spirit is the wisdom that guides man to follow the commandments of the Father. She is like our mother. Just like in the physical world, the father is the ruler of the household, and it's his ideas that guide the home. He is also the one that punishes the children. But the mother is the comforter. She acts as the helper to her husband by continually instructing the children to follow the father's laws. She acts as the comforter that consoles a child after they've been punished. This is the same way that the Holy Spirit helps the Most High and gives wisdom to those that follow him. So far, we have seen that the Holy Spirit, being addressed as a female, spirit all throughout the Old Testament and in the Apocrypha. The only reason that some people may think that the Holy Spirit is a masculine spirit is because of what is written in the New Testament. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 16, and read verse 7. It reads, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Here it is no doubt that the Comforter is the Holy Spirit, which will come to lead men to a deeper knowledge of the truth. That's exactly what wisdom does. The word used for him in this verse is the Greek word autos. And the strong concordance is number G8 
four, six. And it can mean he, she, or it. This is another example of how the Jewish Masoretes purposely mistranslated some key words in the Bible in order to push certain false doctrines. But with all the evidence that we just went over, it clearly shows their deception. Now we've established the function of the Holy Spirit is to provide wisdom, but that is still not her name. Wisdom is a title or an alias, just like the word Christ is not the actual name of our Savior. In the Hebrew language, there are, are actually two different words for wisdom. The first example is the word Chakma. In the Strong's Concordance, it's number H2451. And it means wisdom, skillful in war, shrewdness, or prudence. Now that doesn't sound like the wisdom that would be given to us by the Most High. Let's see when this kind of wisdom is mentioned in the scripture. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, and read verses 12 through 13. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl and the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. In these scriptures, the Most High is not addressing the physical king of Tarvis. But in fact, he's address, addressing Satan himself. We know this because the physical king of Tyrus was not in the Garden of Eden. Lucifer was. The word kakma in this verse is used to describe the wisdom of Satan. That is definitely not the name of the Holy Spirit. So, what is the other Hebrew word for wisdom? Let's go to the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 22, and read verse 12. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy power. Now this is the wisdom that is given to us from the Most High, in order to help us keep the commandments. The word for wisdom used here is shakal. And the Strong's Concordance is number H7922. And it means wisdom, understanding, insight, knowledge, and a good sense. This sounds more like the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. But wisdom is still just an attribute. To get her name, we must still go to the beginning. Our last scripture is going to come from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7, and it reads, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The word breath in this scripture is rewap, and the Strong's Concordance is number H7307. And it means spirit, breath, wind, and mind. This is the breath that the Most High breathed into Adam. The Kadash Rawak, the Holy Spirit, is the breath that gives man life. She is the spirit that dwells within us all. And she is the knowledge and understanding that leads man to receive the gift of eternal life. And with that, this concludes the lesson. Please like, subscribe, and share. If you have questions, feel free to leave comments below. May you all have a blessed day. Barakatha and Shalom.